Hello, uh, Jack. Um, thank you for joining us. This is Jack Sullivan, uh, Deacon Jack Sullivan, who is a, a former judge, and uh, he um, he's a deacon in, in, Mes in the Diocese, Archdiocese of Boston. And Deacon Jack received a miraculous cure through the intercession of St. John Henry Newman, and that served for Newman's beatification. Um, and, and I was speaking with Deacon Jack, and he was telling me about other cures through the intercession of St. John Henry Newman, other cures affected by our Lord, and, uh, and about one in particular at the day of the canonization of Newman in uh, 2019. Deacon Jack, why don't you tell us about that and, and about another cure that you were, you were talking to me about also? Yes, about um, a week before the canonization mass was scheduled, um, I got a call from a former class, high school classmate of mine saying that her granddaughter um, was suffering from advanced brain cancer, uh, very critical in a lot of stages, and that uh, would, I, would I pray for her to uh, Cardinal Newman to, uh, for his intercession. Uh, now, they didn't know you were, was, uh, did they know you were going to the canonization? Yes. Uh, well, she didn't know I was going to the canonization. She just asked me for prayers. Um, the uh, granddaughter was six years old. And, uh, of course, when I got the news from my friend, I, um, I immediately started praying for her. Imagine a six-year-old girl, poor thing, with advanced brain cancer, stage three. And um, um, I told my uh, my my former classmate that uh, I would do better than that. At the beatification, I was asked to pray for a, a woman who was suffering from a rare disease. And I prayed for her during the canonization, the beatification mass. Uh, upon returning home, uh, I got uh, word from, the, uh, from this woman and her grandmother, that uh, her mother, that um, um, she was completely cured of this incurable, rare, very rare disease. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, they were watching the beatification mass on TV, and they could see the healing take place, which yeah. was sort of amazing. So, yeah. going, so going, coming so back now to having the... this in mind, I said to uh, my friend, uh, uh, I'll write uh, your granddaughter's name on a 3 by 5 card, put it on my vest pocket, and during the Mass I will pray the mass of canonization, um, like the mass of beatification, I'll pray f for your granddaughter, uh, which I which I did. Again, uh, this was uh, I got the call, and uh, she had an MRI about a week before I was to leave for Rome, indicating the seriousness of her condition. That is the condition of this six-year-old girl by the name of Sophia. Um, the following day after the canonization mass, I got an email from my friend saying that uh, the day following the mass, the mass was on a Sunday, the following day on a Monday, she had a, an MRI and the cancer was completely gone. That's wonderful. And uh, through subsequent um, MRIs, uh, um, it never, the cancer never returned. The latest one, and again, this is after two years now, um, the latest one indicated that uh, negative as to any form of cancer. And that was without surgery or without, without chemotherapy? Without surgery, uh, you know. And, uh, what did the doctor she say? Was on, she was on some medication. Some medication. What did the doctor but, but say the about this? The medication, the, they were astounded. The, med the medication couldn't change her condition within a week. That's right. Especially in, with advanced brain cancer. That's fantastic. So this shows that, of, of course, it's, it seems obvious, but, but God continues to work miracles when he thinks it's... Yeah. When There's he, another part to the story, when, too. When he, when he thinks it's opportune or for his glory, yeah. right, for the good of people. Yeah. When I was in Rome, the morning of the canonization mass, uh, Carol and I, uh, my wife Carol and I, uh, uh, walked from our uh, motel, or hotel, I should say, um, to the uh, Vatican, to the colonnade area. Um, and of course, uh, there were th thousands and thousands of people converging on St. Peter's Square at the same time. And they had about, oh, 
20, 25 um, um, stops where you had to be you metal detectors, where you had to be uh, um, uh, go through a security check. Um, so Carol and I picked one security check that was nearest to us, and as we're walking into the area, uh, and we got in line, and who's in line immediately ahead of us, but um, the recipient of the second miracle, and my my friend. Melissa Villalobos. Yeah, uh, Melissa Villalobos, and her husband, and uh, all of her children, one of whom, of course, is my, um, I, uh, I was the godfather at, at his baptism by the name, his name was John Henry Villalobos. Um, at the time, John Henry was about uh, almost two years old. You know, Deacon Jack, we're going to stop here for a moment, and then then we'll continue with another short interview, and this way it'll be easier to post it on the web, on our website, or on your website, or on both. Thank you, thank you very much. We'll we'll continue in a moment. <laughs> 